So welcome everyone to today's Puget Sound passenger only ferry study webinar that is being conducted by the Puget Sound Regional Council. My name is Kaylin Thomas and I'm an assistant planner here at PSRC. As we get started, it would be great if you could let us know if at any time um, you cannot hear our screen, hear, hear us or see our screen in the chat function, uh, which is located in the right hand side. The focus of today's webinar is to discuss and gain feedback on the passenger only ferry study as it gets underway. As we are in a new world with respect to public engagement, we are shifting our approach to incorporate more virtual and online engagement opportunities such as this webinar. Leading the study in today's presentation from PSRC will be Gil Cerise, the Transportation Program Manager. There are a couple of options for participating in the webinar via BlueJeans software or through your web browser. If you're having issues connecting, please let us know in the chat and one of our staff will be able to assist with troubleshooting. The presentation is located on our website if you'd like to follow along on your own or having dis difficulties viewing our screen. Your questions and feedback would be greatly appreciated during the presentation, which you can submit using the chat function. At the end of the presentation, we will have the question and answer section where we will get to as many questions as possible during that time. If you would like to revisit or share information with others, the webinar and slides will be posted in their entirety on PSRC's website. In addition, we will add a FAQ section based on the questions raised today. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Gil. Thank you, Kaylon. Uh, again, my name is Gil Cerise. I'm a program manager at the Transportation Planning Division at Puget Sound Regional Council, or PSRC. Um, I, first off, I wanna say uh, we're still in early stages of this study. Your feedback today and your continuing involvement is critical to the success of this study. So thank you for your participation today. Um, and uh, Kayla and I will I'll mention when we should uh, change slides, but this is great to start off here. Our goal for today's uh, webinar is to uh, introduce this study to those who may not be familiar with it. Secondly, to build our stakeholder database of individuals and organizations who can inform the study. And third, to obtain feedback and early thinking on early thinking around things like um, regional priorities and evaluation criteria for evaluating potential routes and terminals. Uh, I'd like to start off uh, with a little introduction to the study and how we got to where we are today. Um, in uh, last year, we went around with a series of uh, presentations and talked about some history of passenger-only ferry in the Puget Sound region. And so I'll just really briefly summarize that as the Puget Sound was the original thoroughfare for moving people and goods in the study area that we're looking at today. In the early 20th century, a network of privately run ferry operators known as the Mosquito Fleet transported around a million people per year on Puget Sound with hundreds of uh, vessels. In the decades since, that fleet of boats fell to competition from roads and rail and financial pressures. By the 1950s, the state took over the uh, Puget Sound ferry operations and still operates it as an extension of the highway system in terms of transporting vehicles, but also transporting millions of passengers every year. The uh, Washington State Ferries also introduced passenger-only ferries, reintroduced it back into the Puget Sound in the mid-1980s, and they operated a passenger-only ferry service for two decades. Uh, until 2006, the state legislature directed the state to leave passenger-only ferry service, calling it out as a form of public transportation. And in Washington State, public transportation is provided by locals. Um, after the legislature uh, directed the state to leave passenger-only ferry, Service, um, the Puget Sound Regional Council's Executive Board directed staff to develop a passenger-only ferry study, which is shown on this slide here. Um, the context of that, again, was the state leaving the passenger-only ferry service and there were some existing routes. So kind of looking at those existing routes and identifying kind of what the opportunities and options were for those routes continuing and their future, but also looking at potential new routes and terminals. Evaluated market opportunities uh, uh, and identified viability for routes and terminals. They looked at implementation considerations, including vessels and facilities. Uh, it touched on regional roles and action steps, and it led to the system that's in place today. Next slide, please. So this, this uh, uh, map shows the existing uh, system. We have basically six uh, existing passenger-only ferry services in, uh, uh, or routes in, in place today, and a seventh one is being planned for implementation later this year. Um, the slide, uh, so again, these, these routes were identified as near-term opportunities in the 2008 study. And so therefore that was a success we consider of the study where it identified these near-term opportunities that are now being implemented. And the slide also illustrates some of the advantages of passenger-only ferry service, where for example, uh, it's faster and more direct than the competing services or, or complementary services. An example here, the Bremerton to Seattle service uh, on Washington State ferries is about an hour long. 
On passenger only ferry service, it's only 30 minutes. In other cases, Kingston uh, on Washington State Ferries would require a transfer in Edmonds, whereas uh, you can get a uh, direct service to downtown Seattle and the employment and entertainment there on a passenger only ferry service at much faster speeds. Next slide, please. A lot's happened since 2008, and part of the study is to examine the great work of implementers that has been completed to date and use that to move forward for larger planning efforts encompassing the entire Puget Sound, Lake Washington, and Lake Union. This slide illustrates the various studies and business plans that have been completed by implementers throughout the Puget Sound region. Some of these studies have resulted in routes that were implemented and shown on the previous slide, while others provide information that will help inform this study. Next slide, please. Finally, since 2008, and particularly in recent years, uh, as new routes and additional services have been added, passenger only ferry service has uh, grown dramatically. Although ferry service in general has increased in ridership in, the, in this period, time period shown here, uh, passenger only ferry service has grown uh, even faster. Uh, the, the successes of these routes and the growth in ridership has really generated a lot of interest in this as a form of transportation and set the stage for what the action of the legislature uh, calling for this study. Next slide, please. And now here we, here we are today in 2019, the Washington State Legislature provided funding to PSRC to conduct a study of the passenger only ferry service covering a wider geographic scope than we did in 2008. This study looks at uh, all 12 counties bordering Puget Sound. It also specified looking at routes and terminals along Lake Washington and Lake Union. Other aspects of the study are summarized on this slide. In some ways, it's an update of the 2008 study where we're looking at updated growth projections to refresh identification of potential routes and terminals and assessing capacity needs for this type of service as well. Another change from 2008 is the addition of some environmental considerations that weren't in included in that study, looking at things such as uh, comparative emission analysis for passenger only ferries compared to other types of uh, transit, as well as looking at uh, uh, advancing electrification of the fleet. PSRC and WashDOT hired a consultant team led by KPFF and shown at the right-hand side of the slide. And they've helped us develop an approach for this study, which I'll go over right, uh, right now. Uh, there's four, uh, four pillars of this study. The first one is uh, our approach to the study is built upon past passenger only ferry studies. This is a very large area that we're looking at and uh, we don't have time or scope to be able to go out to every individual site and look at do site studies and things like that. So we really are building upon the existing studies that have been done to date. We're looking back as far back as the 2008 PSRC study, and we're also looking at any other studies that have occurred since that time. Secondly, given the broad geographic scope and numerous elements included in this study, we're also leveraging knowledge of stakeholders throughout the study area. You have the local knowledge of your areas, what potential terminal locations are out there, the values of passenger only ferry for your area. So we really re are relying upon you as a participant in this webinar and continuing participant in the study to be a stakeholder in this study and help inform that. Third, the study area encompasses several regions of the state. So the study acknowledges differing regional priorities. And this is where regional transportation plans and, and planning efforts in the, within the regions of this, of this study area come into play. And then fourth, uh, assessment of challenges and opportunities throughout. The study will look at these in near, medium, and long-term context. At the end of this study, potential routes will have information to tell them why they're either a longer-term opportunity or a, a shorter-term opportunity, and then what challenges they will need to overcome in order to be implemented. Next slide, please. Hi all, it looks like we lost sound here. If you could just, just give us a one minute to figure this out, thank you.
This is Kristen. I just wanted to try to see if anyone could hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Can the participants hear me? Maybe I can take over for a couple minutes until Gail gets back. Great. Okay. I'm seeing yeses. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thanks for um, being with us and bearing with us through this. Um, Gil will be back soon, I hope, but until then, I'm just going to go over the study schedule. So right now, um, we're in the midst of phase one and also kind of stepping into phase two of our, pup, of our stakeholder engagement. So Gil has been on the road since last fall, um, working through identifying stakeholders. I'm sure many of you have, um, have been to his meetings and have seen some of the presentations that he's been giving just on history and just presenting this project. And part of our goal today is to make sure that we have this rich list of stakeholders. Um, Wendy, it looks like you still can't hear anything. Hopefully you won't miss much, but um, I'm gonna keep going anyway, as many others can hear. So what we have is we're creating this really, um, detailed database list. And it looks like a lot of the folks that I um, know from many other ferry studies um, and in the ferry industry are on this webinar today. So that's so great. I know you guys can't help but be involved in any ferry study you see because we just love it, right? Um, so anyway, we're trying to identify all these stakeholders and also need lots of local information too, based on um, how Gil described our scope of work. It's a vast study area and we can't be at all these places, um, especially given the day and age now. So we need information from everyone else. So we'll be drawing on that. Um, and so one thing that we wanna make sure is that we have everyone on this list. So if you received an email from us to be um, a part of this study, then that means you're already in our database. But if you know folks that you would like to be involved and wanna make sure that they can hear from us and get our um, email lists and announcements, please send that information to us so we can keep building that rich database. Um, so we'll continue to keep adding to that. And we're also moving into phase two, which is we're starting our work now. Um, we're identifying terminal locations. We are also working on um, different criteria and how to um, set up a criteria that really makes sense for many regions and it may be weighted differently. And so that's what you'll be hearing from us next is this information and soliciting feedback as part of phase two. So in April here, um, which we're already in the middle of, crazy to think, um, you'll be getting some more outreach from us and we're planning on doing some, some web-based tools and really getting some email and electronic feedback from everyone about dots on a map and potential routes. And then also um, we'll get the feedback from routes from you all and this will just be how we move forward in, um, in being able to get the, buy, the, the input that we need from all you stakeholders before moving to the next stage in our study. So then the next stage will be confirming findings and providing study status. That will be in late summer. And then of course, um, we will have our study and get feedback from everyone before it's finalized and due to the legislature in January, 2021. So that's Kristen, kind of where we're at. Kristen, I've rejoined. Sorry about that. I don't know yeah, what happened. Yeah, Gil, you're back. Great. Okay, I'll turn it over to you. I don't know if you heard all that, but I tried to walk us through um, the schedule, and I think I, I think I pretty well covered it. So. Great. Thank you so much. I apologize, sure. everyone. The dangers of uh, all web, all uh, remote working. Should we go to the next stage? Uh, the next slide, please, Kalon. So on this slide, we want to talk about uh, the importance of some of these uh, engagement tools and resources that we have out there. I really want to stress the importance at the top here of uh, the project web page that we have on the Puget Sound Regional Council website. Uh, please go there to see updates on the, on the study and, and how we're progressing through time. Also, can't uh, emphasize enough the stakeholder database. If you want to be following this uh, study and, and the progress of the study through time, please make sure that you're on that stakeholder database. If you're on this webinar, 
it's likely that you are on our stakeholder database, but please reach out if you, if you have any questions or if you know anybody else you think should be included who can help inform this study. We also have tools here shown uh, from PSRC and other partners. These are ways that we're planning to communicate. Even though uh, we are remote, working remotely in this COVID-19 pandemic world, we are having our committees uh, meeting online periodically. For example, next week we will have a transit committee meeting online. So we will be continuing to use our committees for that. Uh, we also have these opportunities for connection through our partners. And so uh, uh, there are different web pages and newsletters or opportunities for, for sharing that as well. In addition, we are going to be doing more webinar meetings like this and virtual meetings of, of this type of uh, uh, thing. Next slide, please. One of the first project tasks is to gather and summarize ferry planning studies to date. As previously mentioned, a lot has happened since 2008. So uh, in addition, uh, uh, on the left-hand side here, you can see the passenger ferry studies shown. We had a previous slide that showed them over time. So this is an opportunity to kind of look at this list and let us know if we're missing anything. We think we've got a pretty comprehensive list of the different ferry studies that have occurred since 2008, but please let us know if you know of anything else that we should include. In addition to ferry studies, we also, have reviewed regional transportation plans to understand the context of where ferries would fit into each region and how each region may or may not address passenger-only ferry opportunities. Our team has also used these plans to help identify regional interests that will help prioritize criteria review. The idea here is that not all regions prioritize the same things and our analysis should be aware of that and adapt to it. So I've been asked here is to make, please look at these studies and these plans and let, may let us know if we're missing anything. Next slide, please. This, this is a slide that's a draft for your input. Uh, we uh, have some initial feedback uh, on development of some regional themes and priorities across this broad study area. And so we've developed this slide that shows those kinds of things. One of our asks of you, you will have an opportunity to look at this uh, later in the month uh, as we um, uh, provide some information at our next direct outreach plan later this month. However, uh, we wanted to give you something to look at and kind of provide feedback on uh, you can again look at this if there's too much information on this slide you can get on our website and look at the web uh, at this presentation at your leisure but we want feedback on whether we got the different themes and uh and opportunities identified on this slide uh whether, whether we got that right whether we have missed anything if there's anything to edit you'll notice here on the upper left hand side we identified some common themes across the study area things like resiliency and preparedness environmental stewardship whether that be health of puget sound or emissions and electrification but there's also some differences within the sub areas in the region. So I'll just go over a couple of examples in the north hand side there. The north side, you see that there's um, transportation and access to services. And this is things like healthcare, as well as inner island and island to mainland connections, uh, connectivity in that way. There's islands out there with lots of uh, population on them. So, so these are kind of themes for the northern part of the study area that we'd like some feedback on. In a, as opposed to in the central Puget Sound, we have more of a uh, uh, provision of of um, ferry service as a uh, using the capacity of the waterways to mitigate traffic congestion and provide opportunities and efficiency and travel there. So the, again, this is the, an area that we really do want your feedback on. We're providing some early look at this for your um, for your consideration. Next slide, please. Here's another uh, another slide. We really want your input. This is another draft, as you can see. Uh, part of the approach to this study is to ensure that however routes come out of the criteria review, each one will have a summary of the obstacle or challenge to implementation so that a local stakeholder group or agency can use that as action item to work for, uh, to further implementation goals. This is a very large study area, and this project has scoped to do a detailed route analysis for five routes down at the bottom there. So criteria evaluation is needed to narrow down the field of possibilities. This project proposes a tiered analysis approach that uses operational characteristics identified as fatal flaws, or I, I also like the, to call them substantial hurdles. I'll give Mike Anderson credit for that term. Uh, and, and these are, are, are some areas here we look at things like confined waterways, land use compatibility, route length, and speed requirements. And so uh, these, are, these are the kinds of things we look at and identify whether or not that would push a, a, a potential route out into, a, um, into a, something that requires some substantial work uh, a good example here would might be, in summary, confined waterways. 
that could be rich passage, for example. And we already have passenger only ferry service going between Bremerton and Seattle in that area. But it did take 15 years of study for environmental impacts and things like that to be able to identify and be able to uh, mitigate the types of travel for fast moving ferries in that area. Um, so again, it's not a fatal flaw as it will never go, but it is something that would require substantial uh, study. We're also looking at the, a proposed second tier would uh, rank high level route characteristics from near term to uh, longer term opportunities. And so one, uh, I think the assumption here is we would be weighting and ranking these criteria uh, based on regional priorities and high level assessment and the regional priorities being that previous slide we looked at earlier. But you can see that here we have here everything from market overviews to stakeholder and partner interests are listed as potential criteria in this area. And I'd also like to ask the question, should we uh, be weighting criteria? In some planning, uh, planning efforts we've had in the past, uh, we, the decision is made not to weight criteria, which is a form of weighting in of itself. So just a question, uh, some questions here are, what do you think of the different uh, tier two criteria? Uh, if you have questions about them, are we missing anything? Uh, what, uh, and, and, and how should they be weighted is another thing, if they are to be weighted at all. Finally, uh, the weighted criteria will lead up to five routes selected for detailed analysis, focused on those routes identified for near term implementation with detailed demand forecasting, operational and capital costing, CO2 and sensitive coastal environmental permitting approach. Again, this is something we'd really like your feedback on. This is early stages for this, and we'll have uh, more, to, more to come on this. But this is an important opportunity to provide feedback on this criteria for route analysis. Next slide, please. So what we need from you now, uh, we really do need to know, uh, are there any ferry studies or regional transportation plans that we missed that will help inform this study? We want to know uh, uh, feedback, uh, review our draft regional priorities and provide feedback on that will help us shape our criteria review. And then please uh, periodically go to the web page and stay up to date on this project. And also share this information with interested parties and, and folks you know who might be interested in passenger only ferries. Uh, and uh, please keep involved in our study. Next slide, please. So this is uh, the last slide. I just wanted to kind of uh, call out that the top top link here is our PSRC webpage that includes the passenger only ferry study. And this is the place, the landing page for keeping up to date on the passenger only ferry study and where we are with it. Um, we also want to make sure you, uh, your input will strengthen the study. We really want you to continue to your involvement in the study as, as, through its life. And also let us know if you know of any organizations or people who should be involved in the study. We might already have them on our list, but it doesn't hurt to reach out and let us know. And then we have a project email address here where you can send questions and inquiries. Either I or somebody on our project team will respond to that. At this moment, uh, I think we'll just turn things over for questions and answers. Thank you again. I apologize for the uh, technical difficulty as I got uh, booted out of the webinar somehow. Great, thanks Gil. <clears throat> so, yeah, so at this point, if you'd like to um, type in any questions you have in the chat and we can kind of go through those. Uh, we have a couple queued up here. Um, with regards to operational constraints on the tiered analysis, how are you looking, how are you thinking about terminal docking capacity in downtown Seattle? I think the uh, terminal, uh, the, the downtown Seattle, of course, is a very popular uh, route. So I think that is something we're going to be looking at. Um, I think that is um, one of the assessment pieces here uh, will be to kind of look at uh, potential capacity, what routes are wanting to come downtown, and what capacity needs are for the uh, for the passenger only ferry services there. But obviously, if there's no capacity in downtown Seattle, that would be a constraint for uh, for additional service. So that's something we want to look at and incorporate into the uh, into the um, assessment of routes and terminals. And, and I, I should also mention at this point before you go to the next question, Kaelin, this also might be something for me just to kind of, all these questions will be recorded and we are going to be looking at them in detail with the project team. We're going to be going through and developing a um, uh, FAQ of, of questions and answers of questions we received here and we'll post that on the website as well. That first question was from Jerry Poor. Uh, related to Jerry's question from Scott, will this uh, integrate Kitsap Transit study of a new downtown Seattle dock? Uh, yes, we uh, we do know about that study. Uh, I think information on that study will be helpful for us in, in this um, in this study. 
Another question following up on operational constraints. Are you considering shore power charging requirements for electric operations? Can you repeat the question, Keelan? Sure. Um, are you considering shore power or charging requirements for electric operations? I think that would go into, uh, I think the study, the, basically the legislature asked us to con have consideration for how we advanced electrification of the fleet, uh, electrification of passenger only ferries. So that would go into that element of the study. Uh, I think we would look at that at a, at a high level, I think, with the, uh, with the idea here that uh, this is a very broad study with a lot of different elements. But I think uh, that would be a piece of that component. Are you going to be looking at government run ferry routes only or are all feasibility of private routes? I think we're looking at passenger only ferry service demand and, and opportunities regardless of, of the operator, uh, whether it be public or private. I think we're looking at these, uh, we're trying to provide a fact and data uh, that can help support implementation no matter who the implementer is. Uh, the, the, the study doesn't go into aspects of governance of whether it's provided by a private or or public uh, operator, but uh, uh, it is kind of considered a public tra uh, transportation mode. And so I think one of the assumptions is public transportation operators would be you know, some of the main operators. But, uh, but again, I think in the 2008 study, there was some consideration for some, some uh, routes that were potentially more tourism based. It could have been operated by private operators. Um, I think this is um, something, again, we'll kind of look at that a little bit more detail. I think we're gonna be neutral to the uh, implementer on this, on this study. Question from Dave, is parking availability at each terminal being considered? I think as you look at that, um, uh, maybe, Kaylin, if you could move back to the slide um, that talks about the different uh, uh, approach to criteria analysis. I think a lot of these are on that. Um, you'll see here that we uh, talk about modal review, including transit and parking opportunities in the tier two. That's a proposal there. So um, I think your, your feedback on what particular you're thinking about in respect to parking would be really important. I think as passenger only ferry service as a form of public transportation has a couple of elements to it. There is the parking aspect, some, somewhat like a park and ride for land-based transit, but also um, a transit connectivity with the network. And, um, and so I think that's, that's gonna be something that we're proposing to talk about in some, at some level, at a high level there in tier two. And a question from Thera here, are you looking at potential seasonal routes that might have strong summer ridership, such as between Seattle and Port Townsend? I, I, think, I think we would kind of, we would look into all of that. And I think this is a, a, an opportunity for us to say, you know, this is, uh, uh, if you have an opportunity, uh, if you have a suggestion for a potential route and with the terminal locations, that would be something we definitely want to hear about. I think that that's where uh, I, I'm kind of hearing in that question, uh, there could be some differences in the, in the, the, we have a very broad study area and there could be some differences in the, in the sub areas there. So Port Townsend, again, might be uh, out, kind of a little bit more outside of the, the central Puget Sound region, and maybe there is some different uh, uh, regional priorities there. So I think that's kind of what uh, I would be, I, I think, I think, I think I would certainly want to, Certainly, please include the, the potential routes and terminals there, and that we would be looking at that and, uh, and, and have that as potential um, regional priority there. Right. And Aaron, I, I saw your question there. I think that's going to take some more consideration and follow up from um, our group here. So that will be something that we'll be posting uh, on our website. A uh, question here from Dave. Uh, is the negative impact of Washington State Ferry Fairs for walk-ons being considered? Can you repeat that? Um, yeah, is yeah. the negative impact to Washington State ferry fares for walk-ons being considered? Oh, I, I, so I think this, and this, in this question, I think there's a implication that this might be a competing with riders for the Washington State ferries. Um, I think, I think this is part of what we will, uh, what we want to do with this study as we look at market potential and kind of ridership potential is I think we're going to be doing kind of a comparative assessment of, of the different modes. So um, not just Washington State ferries, but the potential for uh, land-based transit as well. Uh, are the passenger only ferries, what are they doing in terms of their market? And, uh, and, and again, at least, at least at a high level, being able to assess that, you know, are, are they, are they, if you create a passenger only ferry route in an area that's parallel to 
a, a, a Washington State ferry or a uh, or a land-based transit. I think some aspect of what that means in terms of ridership will be uh, will be assessed. A question from Chad: As you research potential passenger ferry routes in the region, are there any consideration being given to targeting underserved communities? So, uh, uh, any consideration to uh, underserved communities? I think that would be something we are interested in that as a criteria. I think of that as equity in, in our transportation, and that's something we're striving to continue to to improve upon in our in our planning at PSOC. And I, I know in other regional transportation planning organizations, everyone's uh, working on that. I think one of the things we'd like to know is what kind of criteria. How how would you uh, how would you assess that in terms of looking at this? This is again kind of we're setting this up in such a way that it really is a data and fact-based um, analysis. So uh, one of the things we've been looking at as we looked at this criteria that are shown on the slide that Kaylin has up is what what kind of criteria would be uh, a good criteria to look at for equity and uh, and looking at those um, uh, disadvantaged populations. So um, I think I just kind of uh, seek feedback on that. I think we're, we're definitely happy and open to having that um, information incorporated into this. A uh, question from Jonathan, are you looking at freshwater routes, specifically Lakes Washington and Union and the Ship Canal? Yes, the, the study did ask us to look at Lake Washington and Lake Union specifically. So those 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 uh, bodies of water will be included in this study and potential, uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier, you'll see that some of the um, existing studies are occurring on, on Lake Washington. There's some routes on Lake Washington, I think even touching into Lake Union that are being considered. But, those are some uh, definitely some places that we'll be looking at. Question from Mark. What can be done to improve Kingston's all-weather passenger boarding capability? I don't know enough about that specific issue, so um, I'm going to look in to see if anyone's got a... Um, One second here. I'm just kind of looking around to see. Um, I don't. Uh, so I think we'll need more information about that. So maybe we can ask the questioner to kind of send us some information. I think again, we're not looking at. Uh, I guess maybe it sounds like a very detailed issue for a specific area. I think one one area I'd like to see kind of in the study, and I think this, what we're trying to identify terminal capacity is, is kind of the issue here. And I think that I think of that as, as capacity in areas like how many vessels can arrive at a terminal and, and, and support that. And then how many passengers can, can access the, the service at the terminal. Um, so I think that's kind of where this study would go. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure about the all weather aspect of that. So I'm gonna punt on that and we'll consult on that and maybe add something to the FAQ later. Okay, so next question from Melissa, how do you, how do you visualize routes in North Puget Sound being identified, prioritized at this point? I think uh, just uh, in, so just to repeat, so routes in North uh, Puget Sound, uh, how do they, how do we see them being identified and prioritized? I think one of the next steps in this, uh, uh, as, as was alluded to earlier in this uh, um, presentation, we'll be doing some uh, additional work uh, kind of working on the evaluation criteria and kind of the regional priorities. And I think that's one place where it'd be really important to hear from our partners in that North Sound area about what their priorities are there and, and being able to look at that. We'll be able to kind of like assess kind of how we're looking at the uh, evaluation criteria and, and, the, um, and the regional priorities. Then we're gonna be looking at what routes and terminals there are. So we'll be kind of seeking feedback from everyone and, and uh, Melissa and others uh, on this call, please, please provide that information. We would then be taking that and, and assessing it through that um, through that approach to criteria, which is shown here. Uh, it would be a tiered analysis. Uh, we'd be looking at things like first off, are there confined waterways, land use compatibility aspects, uh, route length and speed requirements that might might pull that pull some routes out at that point. Maybe they end up being something that has more of a substantial challenge in a longer term. Uh, but there'd be others that are that are advanced into tier two, 
tier two, we'd be looking at those kind of uh, those different aspects there. And so kind of a long story short, I think you would just kind of, we would be putting those routes through the same filters that we'd be putting the routes in the other parts of the study area, but we might have some little differing regional uh, um, priorities that are identified through looking at regional transportation plans and other types of plans. So I think that's in a nutshell what we'd be doing there. Question from Paul, will there be consideration study around the a regional governance structure? Uh, this study was very silent on governance, and uh, and and I th I think we are planning to stay out of that. Uh, I think one one idea could be that in, in uh, reviewing um, the results of the study, maybe one of the, the I, I see in lots of these types of studies that we come up with some next steps, some next opportunities for um, how do we, how we move forward. I could see that potentially being one of those things that comes out. But at this point, uh, uh, we are not we are not directed to go into governance, and we don't plan to do it. We're keeping it very fact based uh, and very data focused, and being able to provide that information for the implementers, whoever they are, to be able to move forward. Uh, so maybe if there's uh, further information uh, he'd like to provide on, on uh, you know what aspects he, uh, he's interested in, maybe that would be something he could provide, and we can um, talk offline on that. Okay, and a question from Stan here on how to be added to the stakeholder database. Uh, the email address is right down here at the bottom, uof underscore study at psrc.org. Yes, I'll and just kind of reiterate that, Kaylin. Uh, that's, uh, that's the best way to be included. Uh, we encourage people to, um, to email that's, that uh, email address, uh, asking to be added to the stakeholder uh, list. You can share the link to the uh, to the um, website with people you know who might be interested, and they they can uh, ask to be added on it as well. And uh, or you can just let us know you think that um, you make sure that uh, this person or this entity is also part of the study. We really do want this is going to be the key to making this a successful study is the um, involvement of all the stakeholders. A question from Shiv. Are you looking at serving the region for emergency management? I think that's one of the ones when we looked at that um, regional priority slide, we kind of were, again, kind of trying to assess and identify the, um, the different potential regional priorities. And it seemed like resilience and preparedness is uh, kind of a common theme of ferry transportation um, and uh, an opportunity to be a, an alternative way of moving people uh, in an emergency uh, uh, type of a thing. So, so we were seeing that as potentially a common theme there. Um, that would be an element uh, across the area. But we're interested in your feedback. Is that something that should be common? Is that more important in one area or another? So again, that's that's kind of how we we see that coming across. Question from Raquel. Uh, Will future growth targets for population and employment be considered in the market overview? Um, yeah, could you uh, move to that uh, um, that next slide, Kaylin? I think, um, yes. Yeah, so I think your question is, uh, uh, yes. I, I guess the short answer is yes. We plan to have the latest um, uh, population projections used for that uh, for that kind of information. So. Um, I guess a good example here is we did a study in 2008 and uh, on passenger only ferry in our region, um, focused mostly in our region with some outside of the region routes. And at that time, uh, I think that was even before we had our Vision 2040 uh, regional growth strategy. Um, one reason to update this study is that we just now have a draft uh, regional growth strategy out to 2050. And one of the reasons we kind of iterate on our transportation planning is that we always are updating data and information and, and, uh, and adjusting our plans that way. Similarly, now we have updated regional growth strategy in a central Puget Sound. The other RTPOs are also updating their growth strategies or have them updated. We're gonna be using the latest uh, information we can uh, to help in that market assessment. And question from Wendy. How will cost-benefit analysis criteria be developed? Will indirect benefits to removing cars from highways be included, such as safety? Can you repeat it? Uh, uh, just a lot passion sure. that question. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, how will the cost-benefit analysis criteria be developed? Will indirect benefits to removing cars from highways be included, such as safety? 
I don't th I think this implies that we're going to do a detailed cost benefit analysis. Uh, uh, that's I don't think in the plans we are going to provide the data. I think part of it is going to be kind of an modal analysis of uh, where I think I'm implying and the specifics of how that is uh, is a yet to be determined. And, and our consultants or some really smart people working on this will um, be able to help me with uh, updating this in the FAQ. But um, I think the idea here is to look at that uh, modal difference. People are moving from one place to another. And uh, they're currently doing it now, or they want to do it in a certain way. Are they driving? Are they riding the Washington State Ferry? Are they are they riding transit um, uh, from Tacoma to Seattle, or, or taking a, a, a bus, or, or driving on I-5? Uh, what will they be doing when passenger only ferry service is, uh, is operating on a, in, a, in a way that that might attract their their uh, ridership? So the changes in the ridership. Uh, and the demand will will be captured in in the study. Uh, I think the idea here is that we we're going to have a we're going to have a, a ridership demand for the route. But I think also we'd like to try to capture what what are the differences in those other modes. And and I think that kind of helps with some of the um, identification also what emissions uh, would be occurring on those other modes is kind of what was directed from the from the legislature. But a full on cost benefit analysis, I don't know that that's going to be part of this. It's just going to be more of a more of a information on on what uh, the, the opportunities are for this passenger only ferry for decision makers and potential implementers. Next question is from Mike. With regards to the Puget Sound routes and potential Seattle terminals, will the study assess demand and look beyond downtown Seattle, such as Lower Queen Anne, serving the regional asset of Seattle Center? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? I yeah, with regards to the Puget Sound routes and potential Seattle terminals, will the study assess demand and look beyond downtown Seattle, such as Lower Queen Anne, serving the regional asset of the Seattle Center? Again, I think that's uh, uh, we we're hoping that uh, uh, people will there'll be an opportunity to, to suggest routes and terminals, and I think that would be a great opportunity to to uh, include that in there as an option. Um, I think that's a question of potentially a terminal there at the, at the northern end of uh, Elliott Bay. Um, that uh, would potentially serve that Seattle Center. Um, that would be a suggestion we were seeking for a potential terminal location, and and what route would it would serve? You know, what what different routes potentially serve that? So yeah, please please give us that uh, uh, option, and we can uh, include that in in our um, for assessment. And a follow up from Peter on terminal locations: uh, Will the study provide Central Seattle waterfront? Lake Washington and or Lake Union terminal recommendations? Um, the study will, will we're, we're going to be uh, talking about capacity at the terminals. I think we will, um, uh, I think we're gonna be looking at potential terminal locations, whether, uh, I don't think the study will necessarily make a recommendation that this is, this is the terminal location. I think there, um, as I understand, we're gonna be looking at it at a high level and looking at potential capacity aspects of it. So one of the initial questions was capacity in the downtown Seattle uh, passenger only ferry terminal and uh, near term issues with that. So I think being able to kind of uh, look at this at a, at a broad scope of how many different routes uh, I wanna come into Seattle and then what kind of capacity issues, uh, it, what, that kind of helps us like how many boats, how many passengers are we talking about that wanna come to Seattle and gives us a sense for, for uh, both particularly as we look at these routes and uh, whether they're nearer term opportunities or longer term opportunities, what are the nearer term um, capacity issues and what are the longer term capacity issues? That then is information that can be used. I think we're supposed to be looking at potential terminal locations, whether this actually comes down and says, this is the, the one that, ha uh, that should happen. I, I don't think that's necessarily gonna be the outcome of this, but we will be looking at that and maybe providing some opportunity options and opportunities for that. Next question is from Dean. Is the Clinton and Muckleteo area part of the study? Yes, it is. That was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that uh, covers the questions that we have on hand. There's a few that we will need uh, some further consideration that we'll follow up either one-on-one -on -one or post on our website. Um, any other questions at this time? Yeah, while you're doing that final call for questions, Kaylin, I'd just like to yeah, reiterate that um, I did my, uh, I apologize again for falling off uh, the, the uh, webinar earlier. I, I think I flustered me a little bit, so I uh, apologize for maybe some of the rambling answers here, but I will uh, touch base with our um, 
with our ferry, passenger only ferries team here, and we will develop, uh, look at the questions in a little bit more detail and develop some um, uh, FAQ and kind of a question and answer based upon this webinar. We can share it out with uh, those that have uh, participated and RSVP'd for the, for the webinar so you can see it or at least give you a notification that's up on our webpage. And we will put it up on the webpage so people can look at it. And, and so if your question didn't get answered or if it's partially answered, you, we'll, we'll be looking at this and we'll add that on. It looks like we have uh, one more question come in from Karen. How has PSRC coordinated with affected Indian tribes on the 2008 and current study? We've invited the uh, tribes to participate. Uh, I, we we uh, send out an invitation for this webinar, and uh, we are planning to continue working through the tri Tribal Transportation Planning Organization, the TTPO, uh, as an ongoing basis to be working with them on this. But we see the tribes as a, as a key stakeholder, and we really want to encourage uh, their participation. So um, I'll be looking at kind of who all was actually able to come to this virtual uh, meeting and webinar that we have here, and uh, we'll. Uh, Follow, make, definitely make follow-ups to ensure that we have a continued engagement from them. And in terms of the 2008 study, uh, I, I know that they were involved. I know one of the, um, I think one of the um, uh, routes even uh, went to a, uh, a, a tribe, a tribal location on, on uh, in Kitsap County. Um, I can't remember offhand, so I know that they were involved. I just was not part of that study, uh, so I, I can't speak to that very, very well right now. Any other questions, Caleb? None so far. So thank you all for your uh, for your participation. Again, uh, your your involvement will make the make or break this study. We we want your, your continued involvement to uh, help make this a great success. Um, so please, again, keep keep in touch. Send us emails to the project email address. Follow us on the website and let us know how, how we can engage. If you know of any upcoming opportunities for engagement or, or outreach, please uh, let us know. And, and uh, thank you again for participating in this webinar.